I am very excited for this next talk. Um, we are all going to have the privilege of listening to the CEO and co-founder of Pattern, Dave Wright. Let's give him a round of applause and welcome to the stage. All right, how's the sound? Okay, good. Um, thank you, everyone. This is a fun, you know, I think the, the, the audience here sort of demonstrates the, the, the level of interest, you know, that people have in this topic. And, and, and I think the reason for that is, is people just know it's a thing. It's going to be something. Um, all right, got a question for you. There's been a lot of things, of course, that, you know, in history, you, if you just look at that, you know, they've been underhyped. There's, you know, you look at some of those articles, you're like, that really happened? You know, 10 things that are wildly overhyped, the iPhone. <laughs> I wonder if the guy who wrote that ever wrote like a follow-up that's like, that sucked really bad. <laughs> um, so there's been some things in history that underhyped. And then, of course, there's just as many that get overhyped. Um, so here's the question, straight dead answer. How many of you think, let's go underhyped, overhyped here. And this can even be if you think it's like a little overhyped or a little underhyped, okay? How many of you think AI is underhyped? Okay, how about overhyped? Okay, so a little bit on, on both sides. It looked like the underhyped group won out. This is just fascinating on the internet. Take a look at this video. Wait, how does one, what do you write to it, like mail? No, a lot of people use it and communicate. I guess they can communicate with NBC writers and producers. Allison, can you explain what internet is? No, she can't say anything in 10 seconds or less. Oh, <laughs> oh. Allison will be in the studio shortly. What, is what does it mean? It's a, it's a giant computer network made up, made up of Started from, oh, I thought you were going to tell us what this was. It's so like a looking computer the billboard. It's not, it's, it's not in it. It's, it, it's, it's a computer billboard, but it's nationwide, right. and it's, it's several uh, universities and everything all joined together. And right. And others can access it. And, right. And it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. It Just came great. in really handy during the quake. A lot of people, that's how they were communicating out to tell family and loved ones they were okay because all the phone lines were down. I was telling Katie, you know, but you don't, need, you don't need that. You don't need a phone line to operate no. internet? No. No. <laughs> That really happened with really smart people. Um, all right, so we're gonna have some fun today, but uh, first off, we gotta pick our 20-minute brand. Is, the, our, is our Hunter fan team here? Woo! All right, <laughs> look at that. We got one over there. Um, how, oh, we got some more over here? Okay, good. Um, the team's been, been working on the, the Hunter fan, and I think there's have some pretty impressive results for you. Uh, how about another brand? to do in 20 minutes. And I've got Jordan in my ear again. He's going to tell me if. Camelback. Jessica. 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 PB Fit. What? PB Fit. PB Fit. I'm just saying these because they're, the team is going to tell me which one they want to do. Super Feet. Steel Case. They want PB Fit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here because um, it'll, it'll be fun. To, we'll get to the results. This this all preamble stuff is a little bit boring, but I think it's interesting to get uh, uh, a perspective on it. You just start seeing the progression of retail over history, and it has been phenomenal. And we're on a we're at one of these points where, you know, look how often it happens. It's like every twenty years something like that, and we might be, I, I mean, did you ever think that the internet, at least in our space, digital commerce, would be, th this could be as impactful as that? And then, it might not be. All right, this was, uh, uh, you know, the father of data science, father of AI here, I guess, considered. Um, and you know how you make, you know how you get the fathered badge? You write papers. So if you don't write papers, you will never see yourself here in like 100 years. But these two both did. And Alan Turing wrote on the, the Turing test, 
which was uh, is a, is a fascinating concept or a Turing test. You know, the the concept was he said, can you put um, a judge in a room, and I don't know why he wanted it to be a male and a female in the other room, and he can't see them. And the only way they can interact is via written text. And could the discriminating judge determine if one was a machine and one was not? And I haven't heard if this has actually happened, but I think we hit this. Has anyone heard? You know, I haven't. You know, I don't know why people aren't pulling and testing this, but. Uh, and then John McCarthy, it was the first one to coin artificial intelligence in a paper in 1956. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting, is sometimes we get tired of hearing about it, like self-driving cars. How long have we been hearing about this? For like 15 years, I got all excited, I bought a Tesla, you guys do this? And then you're like, I'm so excited. You pay like $7,000 for all the software. To, and then you do it, and they're like, hey, why don't you keep your hands on the wheel? And then you're like, wait, it's not self-driving? Sort of is. But you have to keep your hands on the wheel. You only take your hands off the wheel for like 10 seconds, and it yells at you, right? And, and then if you don't put your hands on the wheel, it grounds you for the whole drive. Who's been grounded on the Tesla? Yeah. So then you can't turn it on for the rest of the, the, rest of the drive. And, uh, and, and, and Mel is always talking about you know, Musk and the, and the self-driving, and we listen to his podcast together, and, and, uh, and he's like, it's gonna be ready like next year, and, I'll, and I, I've lost some level of faith. And the problem is, and this is where it's different between on the self-driving and what we do, is if he gets it to 99%, no one cares. You can't use it. It will still kill someone. So will it get to 100%? I don't know. It's tough. But what about in our space on the digital side? If we get to 99%, you know, we're celebrating. You know, then we can maybe try to get to 99.1, 99.2, and we're just constantly pushing the envelope there. But it's pretty exciting where we are in comparison. All right, so this will be a, a little bit technical. But there are some base models, foundational models of AI, and they're across the bottom there. Um, there are some key advancements that have happened that has sort of created this revolution. Um, and they talk about two things, largely. You, when you probably read all the, about these models, um, it's weird, I'm getting a call. Um, when you talk about these models, um, the they talk about two things largely. They talk about parameters, and they talk about tokens. So a token will be some point of meaning. Oftentimes it's like just a comma, right? And, and they're trying to figure out all that AI can really do is work to take strings, at least language learning models, work to take strings and predict, you know, what goes up must go, right? So there, some of those very basic things, if they're in close proximity to one another, are easy to do. The transformer models, which is the you know GPT transformer, they are are now allowing us to take and make connections from say a document over here and a document over here because they're using attention. I don't know if you many of you have seen there's eight people wrote a paper on why attention matters. You know, sort of you know in 2017, and that started this revolution where like you know it's it's interesting how. Um, a few people get together, come up with one idea, and how fast you advance. Now, take AI now. You, you guys are probably all using this some form of your life to learn faster, to get better. How fast will advancement happen now that everyone here is a little bit smarter and a little bit faster? Even if all you do is use ChatGPT or BARD or something simple, right? It's fascinating where this, where this is gonna go. Now, they... A lot of people are say, say to themselves, okay, well, we have Llama, which is open source. It used to be Facebook's model, and, and you know, they put out a press release saying that they open sourced it, which was really nice of them because it already got leaked. But uh, um, they have 65 billion parameters and 1.4 trillion tokens. So the model is pretty good. And you could 
you know, one of the things that's somewhat tempting is to just take the open source models that are trained pretty well and then build maybe an e-commerce custom model on top, like Bloomberg did. So Bloomberg, been working for two years, took those base models, and they said, hey, we're going to be better than anybody in just the finance sector. The problem is, is if you go out on Reddit, they're just getting wrecked because somebody is parameterizing the general models, and they're showing how they're already better than Bloomberg, who's been working at it for two years. So it is hard to stay ahead of the general public on this. So it will be a fascinating journey to see you know, this, sort, this battle play itself out and whether there will be much in the way of customized models. There has to be some um, customized models, though, for medical diagnosis, simply because the data has to be very clean. Because anytime you have what's called a hallucination in the AI world, it's essentially the model has been trained in, incorrectly. Right? So if you're doing, especially the medical diagnosis, it's hard to get access to all the data because we all want it to be private. But if you could have access to the, all the data, if we had everyone's medical data, which no one would give up, unfortunately, but if everyone did, we could train these models. They would hallucinate a little bit. But imagine if you're like, here's my blood test, and here's a couple symptoms. And it's like, based on the other 3.7 million people that live in your area, you probably have this. I think we'll get there. We'll be that will be a cool time uh, in medicine. OK, this is why I'm so, um, I would say, 70% bullish on, on AI, is it has to do something. We talked a little bit about this in, this, in the overall talk. Um, was that me, or was that the screen? Maybe I should sit down. <laughs> um, the. Uh, uh, this is, a, I love this formula just in terms of life in general, right? Why, why is it a function of x? So if we want to create something, it's y. And this is what we have to deal with. We have the machine that we're going to do it with, and then we have all the variables that go into it. If our machine, which largely has been our brains, is now assisted, even if it's just assisted with AI, and we have this, even if we don't do anything else with the data, which we know we can't with AI, we, you know, already the data is better. It takes you five seconds to do most stuff. That means the outputs have to be better, which means what keywords you choose for things, what your content is. All of those things will get better, and the brands that are, are just marching along the path, they're going to wake up one morning, and they're going to realize that, wow, we are, I didn't realize how far behind we actually were. All right, this is how these models work. They're based on neural networks. And essentially, if you go back to, you know, I guess, I, can I go back on that? Oh, cool. If you go back to these models, say you want to train a model on whether something is a dog or a cat, right? So essentially, you've got, you have your output, which is your label. So you'll train a model, and you say, your, your, the output of this model is dog. You feed the picture in, that's your, you know, that's your data, and then it needs to figure out over time, and a lot of them have been already trained with a lot of data, but uh, they will be trained then to say, what do I care about in a neural network? So as I work through these models, how do I weight the path? This part of the face, maybe, let's go back to our dog or cat, you know, I, of course, picked one that looks somewhat similar. You know, where? So as a machine decomposes that image or tokenizes it and breaks it down into discrete points of meaning, so some small point of meaning, which might be you know, the whiskers. Oh, the whiskers are probably good. I just thought of that. But, uh, but if you do like whiskers, like does it have whiskers is probably is, as a parameter. Remember, that's a parameter in the neural network. So that'll be a parameter awaiting of the path. Whiskers, no whiskers. And, and maybe whiskers is like a 9 out of a 10, you know, if we're going to weight it. And, and, and then it will go to you know, follow the path. And, but if it doesn't have whiskers because you shave your cat or something, then you know, now what? But it will take all of this data. That's a parameter. So the weighting of this neural network, which the one, you know, Llama had 65 billion 
parameters. So the weighting of these different networks. Um, and then you have the tokens, 1.4 trillion of them, which is the data that feeds into the system. And then they're constantly testing. And the amazing thing about a lot of the models now is they're creating their own tokens. They're running out of data to scan, so they're just starting to create more so they can keep training their own models. So these are supervised versus semi-supervised, unsupervised models. A fully supervised model would be something like, and they're easy, dog, cat. You label every single dog, you label every single cat, fully supervised, and you just say, now train yourself. Then you, of course, test it. A semi-supervised model might be something like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna hide some of the data, and we're just gonna see what you can do, but we're not gonna tell you if you're even right. And it, over time, still gets very close. But you can see how it can be completely wrong. So if any of you guys use it, it it's just following pattern. If someone trains the model incorrectly, like if they're goofing around, I guess you could tell your kids, when they, you know, we used to laugh as a family because we're like, what if one of the kids, I don't know why we thought this was funny, but we're like, what if the kids, when they grow up, we just switch horse and cow? Wouldn't that be funny when they're in kindergarten, they're like, there's a cow? And it was actually, you know, I don't know why we thought it was funny, maybe that, then it is, but um, we, uh, uh, if the model gets trained like that, it will just be dead wrong. It has no real intelligence. It's just learning from all of the data that's out there. All right, so one of the things that always comes up when, and this is from, you know, John mentioned this in his presentation earlier today, is people get nervous that AI will take their job. And AI will take a lot of jobs. Probably not the jobs of the people in this room. Because if you, it will, you know, people leveraging AI, you know, if you're the one who goes back to your company and you're like, hey, look, I figured out how to leverage AI. I can do this, 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 and this. It's not perfect yet, but it's super interesting. That is the group of people, unfortunately, that will probably take a lot of jobs. I think there will be a little bit more of an economic imbalance as we, as we move along. That's what people are afraid of. People are less afraid of you know, you know, AI taking over the planet as they are the economic and political disruption that we'll see. Okay, here's the e-commerce formula. Everyone's familiar with this. Here's all the outputs we're chasing. We already talked about this in the overall, in the, you know, and this gets very complicated. You can see how this is, this is difficult. Okay, this is where AI gets much harder. So as we're doing it, we're gonna show you today a fact sheet, and our fact sheet is broken down into, you know, these eight areas. Now, the only reason you care about a fact sheet, largely, I'm just doing it for demo purposes. Because we would never put it in an actual doc. We just store it in Snowflake, or we store it in a database so that we can access it. However, for you to all see, we just outputted it to a Google doc and it's like 300 pages. So you can, so just so you can get the idea, isn't it, I guess this one's 250 pages for Hunter, right? 246 pages, um, the one for Hunter Fan. And, and we're just gonna walk through a little bit about that. And, and then, then we have our outputs, remember you know, the formula, and then we're leveraging these tools. There is no tool, we're leveraging in what we're showing you today, 33 different tools. So, and there are so many tools that are coming to market, there's 25 a week, and uh, a thousand of them, we don't even know what they are. I mean, this is how fast this is moving. Eight months ago, no one's even heard of talking about this. All right, so here's, here's just a view of the tools that are out there. A lot of these you've used. AutoGPT, has anyone used AutoGPT yet? A couple people? Fascinating, you can be like, hey, um, I wanna run for president in 2024, tell me all the tasks I gotta do. It's like, Whoa. like, scary complete. Um, now, I have thought, you know, how about you should start as a consulting company? Because if people are behind this, you know, like, hey, tell me all the steps it takes to get my product to China. 
And your boss, you walk in your boss, you're like, hey, look, you know, I've been working a while on this. <laughs> and here it is. All right. Okay, so then the key, and, and a lot of you guys are probably saying to yourselves, hey, this is cool, we can do this. Um, on the, where pattern has a unique advantage, I'm sure many of you do, is we have always just been an e-commerce data company and we've been scraping data and pulling in data for 10 years now, and we have 300 trillion data points. So as, it's why we can like call out Hunter Fan in the audience and we're like, hey, take part of the 300 trillion data points and let's use it to build all of these models, but it gives enough data to feed the system. You probably used, you know, an OG, how many of you actually created like a product description or something using AI? So most everyone. Our um, prompt that we're using, if you guys use prompt engineering, is unfortunately there's really no good, you know, schools yet that are deep on prompt engineering, but, uh, our prompt is 16 pages long to tell, you know, so, but it's very easy to say like, hey, create my listing or whatever, right? And it just does it. But to do it at a, you know, higher level, instead of, you know, 70%, we're like trying to get to 99. Then you have to have the fact sheet and the prompts. Here's, um, all right, let's go through the fact sheet. Let's go through the 24 hour brand. Here's the, here's the Hunter fan. Now remember, this is still, this is only 24 hours, okay? So um, it's never perfect, but it's pretty damn good. All right, so here's the fact sheet. Let's go through this. Okay, so I think they just grabbed this product. Now, here is, oh yeah, this is interesting. Um, when you tokenize an image, you're essentially taking all the points of meaning out of an image. So it'll grab and see like, hey, you know, like, it'll even say, hey, we're 99.993% confident there's this product, this this image contains a ceiling fan. And it would just go, go down and just keep going. It, it, you know, you don't need to go forever, you know, but to just to stop there, that's good, Jordan. Um, and you can pick different areas out. This, you know, this is how they'll tokenize or break down the mean of an image. Now, what you don't want to maybe do is do it of yourself. My AI, my avatar, they made me reshoot it like three times because they said it was boring and sad. And I went into the mirror and I'm like, I think my closed mouth, when you, it's like sad, I guess. It's like, won't. And when you avatar yourself, they, you know, they're like doing this with an image, a video, and, and, uh, and then trying to recreate that with AI. You know, sometimes it's a little depressing. I've been wanting to try it with Mel because I think it would be good, but she, she, hasn't, she hasn't given her consent yet. Um, okay, let's look at the next one. Again, this Hunter fan. Okay, so this is the brand sheet. So all of this, all AI, by the way. Okay, so product physical design, it looks like it's minimalist sleek. It's similar to products like a MacBook Pro or a DeWalt cordless drill. Congratulations, all the Hunter fan people. That's what AI thinks of the product. That's actually pretty good for a fan, right? When you're like, hey, it's sort of like a MacBook. Um, <laughs> and, th and then you have, you know, monochromatic, simple, by the way, if you don't know, you know, color schemes and stuff, I, when I went over this the first time, I was like, what the hell does monochromatic mean? You know, but uh, it's just like one color or something, right? Um, so keep going. Let's go to the next waypoint. We just tagged some areas. You know, there's a bunch of data on keywords, keyword phrases. You won't, it's just too hard to go through this. So then you say to yourselves, okay, what is the jobs to be done that AI thinks Hunter Fan is trying to do? This is what they think. Room temperature regulation, energy efficiency, home automation, lighting control, quiet performance. That's what AI, th oh, I guess we got some more here. Stylish design, easy installation, adjustability, and low maintenance, lasts for a long time. So that's cool. Then it will also break down your competitors and say, now what is the job to be done? You know, so this is, uh, uh, you guys have heard of Warmy Planet, the Hunter fan guys? No? Yes? Okay. So AI picks up on them as a competitor, and they say, here's the job to be done that we believe they're tackling. You know, a lot of them you can see is the same. You know, I think this, um, 
noise reduction, and improved sleep quality. So that's interesting, and maybe like an angle from a perspective, because I don't think the sleep quality wasn't on the Hunter fan listing. I think that's pretty interesting as a, as a call out. And by the way, that's AI, just figuring that out. They're like, what does, what is your company's job to be done? And what are your competitors' job to be done? And where might the differences be? Okay, keep going. They're telling me to move faster. All right. Okay, we'll go really fast through this, but this is the personas. How many of you built personas in the, you know, for your brand? It takes a long time. How about a nice head start? Of course, this won't be accurate. The AI is just gonna pop out and say, here's all the personas we think we use your product. So homeowners seeking energy efficient cooling and lighting, individuals who value smart home integration. It's cool, keep going. People who prioritize, uh, what was that one? Design and aesthetics, quiet and comfortable indoor environment, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, this fact sheet is pretty cool and this just comes out of a machine. So even if you're just gonna apply all your smarts to this fact sheet and not do anything else, this is a, there's a lot of cool data here. And we only saw like a few pages of, you know, 246. All right, let's, let's keep going. Okay, we don't have time probably to go over this too much, but could, do you wanna drop in to just predict real fast? Okay, so this is our technology that uses machine learning. I'm not even gonna go into all the details on this, but the output, you know, from a machine learning standpoint, the label for us is winnability. What we're trying to figure out is how winnable is a keyword against a set of competitors. So um, go, go, just hit the, the uh, digital shelf. Okay, so this is the product. On the left is, um, it looks like it's a matte product, you know, it's $199 or maybe, I don't even know how we would know that that was matte. Is that right? Hunter fan people? What? Map was 199. So AI, I still, AI thinks it's still 199. Um, and then you can sort of see the average rating of everyone on your shelf. So hit the com competition matrix real fast, the, right next to competing products. So this is the group of competitors you have, and you can scroll through you know, why AI thinks these are your competitors. Let's look at the grid view real quick. Grid view, competing products right next to competition matrix. Sorry, Jordan. Okay, so here's all of the brands. You know, it looks like there's some products that you know, are, you know, we're competing against that are in the same brand, so I'd have to filter those out. But uh, all right, let's, uh, um, let's just look at the, the recommendations. Okay, so these are the, at a keyword, keyword phrase level where AI has decided you have the most, this is proprietary to just pattern. We've built a model to say, how, could we win a keyword or not? And let's take, let's, so here's the one journey. Let's just look at some of these real fast. So ceiling fan, 130, mo I need, probably somebody knows what that means. Um, modern ceiling fans with lights, modern ceiling fans, indoor ceiling fan, indoor ceiling fan, you know, probably a competitor. Um, and you can just go down this list. But these are, this is sorted based on the output of the machine learning that basically says, could this product against that competitive set, so all those competitors, do we think it could win that keyword? So fascinating. Okay, let's keep going. Let's jump back. Again, these models haven't had time to learn much because we just did this in 24 hours. Okay, let's look at the prompt. <clears throat> Hit the top. All right, it's a 17-page prompt. So if you've actually done, you know, you guys are using like any of these models like ChatGP or whatever, you basically say, hey, you're now a marketplace listing GPT. Your job is to tell me blah, blah, blah. Here's all the factors to consider. You know, and your like features, benefits, product price, product quality, there's a lot. Okay, so then they're like, hey, keyword placement. How should you do this? How should you use the language? You know, you just start rolling, keep, keep going. You guys have to read this fast. <laughs> Anyone get that? Um, okay, so oh, this is sort of cool. Grow up a little bit, Jordan. You're like, okay, here's some things you're allowed to do, and here's some things you're not allowed to do. And here's the product. Keep going. And we give it some search terms. We, wanna, we basically are feeding it the winnable search terms. 
so that it will grab most of those. And then we, we have the personas here. You can see we're using personas. We're using you know, the voice because it will analyze the brand voice and all those types of things. AI just, it's pretty amazing. OK, let's go back to the output. So this will be your prompt. And for those of you who've done prompt engineering, this is a very complete prompt. And the only way you can get really good at this is by getting really good at building prompts. OK, let's go back. Let's go, out, let's, let's go back to the output. OK, so now let's see what, the, uh, what it built for content. All right, we have English. And you can see they're tackling, you know, oh, we got German here. He switched, he went pretty fast. Um, as you read through this, you can start seeing that it's very well informed. OK, keep going. We played with, you know, yesterday, you know, so we decided to do a little Game of Thrones this time. And notice it redesigned the fan. If the 100 fan people want to use that, you know, that'll be a royalty of 3%. <laughs> um, so it's sort of fun. Keep going. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I said Game of Thrones, didn't I? Yeah, Lord of the Rings, sorry. Um, all right, so we got Mandarin, French, Spanish, and we built the website in 24 hours. You ready? Hopefully the Hunter fan people. Functional website, 24 hours. You can add it to cart. You can see all the design people in the room are like, ooh. Oh no! Right, you know. So roll up, Jordan. Um, but the thing that's interesting is you're like, hey, here's a start. Here's something that's sort of interesting that's very well informed, and there's a lot of reasons why. You know, use it as a start and go from here. But where will we be in six months or a year from now? Okay, Jordan, let's pop out and. Okay, this is this is pretty cool. It just pulled. It went to, that to Amazon and said, "Okay, let's look at all of the reviews, and if they didn't have a response, AI just grabbed them." So none of these responses, these are all. We didn't write any of these. We didn't grab any of these. So it's like the humming noise. They just grabbed it to build the presentation. They put it in the deck. The humming noise is something you have to get used to, not ideal for light sleepers, blah, 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 and you can see the response. It's, it's pretty good for no human interaction for customer service, right? And then if you look over here, you know, first off, first I have two of these fans, one is great, and the other is nothing more than trash. We probably, a lot of us have wrote in a review something like that, right? And they're like, sorry to hear you experience with one of your fans. We value your feedback. Please consider using, uh, utilizing our return policy for a refund or replacement. Uh, by the way, on the website, if you, you know, the website that was pre-built, it already has like all the return policy information, how to return the product, who to contact. On the website, they just popped out. Okay, let's go. Okay. And then you know there's questions, you know, all the Q&A stuff. You know, so this is one of the questions we just grabbed. You know, I broke the light cover. How do I get a new one? <laughs> it's like, try their website. <laughs> um, or you could say something like, if you aren't going to use a human, that might be even better. That's like, hey, we're sorry to hear you broke the light cover. You can easily order a replacement directly from our website or contact a dedicated customer service team for assistance. We're committed to ensuring your, you know, light up your space beautifully. What? How does AI do this? Fascinating. OK, keep going. And here's just a few little, you know, you could use this for, you know, a, you know, a sponsor brand video or wherever you want, just a little bit of content that was fun to put together. Oh boy, the video with my avatar. Where's the Hey Gen peop folks? Yeah, they helped me make my avatar. I don't know if you guys used Hey Gen. We used Hey Gen, and uh, I wish you guys could make it happier. <laughs> but uh, here we go. Is there sound?
Maybe it's better without sound. I wish I could tell you all to take a water break, but maybe just take one myself. Um. Meet the Aerodyne ceiling fan by Hunter Fan Company. Modern, quiet, and efficient. An absolute game changer. The Aerodyne ceiling fan effortlessly combines style, silence, and smart tech, making it an indispensable part of our home. With a sleek matte black finish, this 52-inch fan features a whisper-quiet motor and sure-speed technology for powerful high-speed cooling. Its LED light kit, encased in white painted glass, offers dimmable, energy-efficient lighting. It's perfect for any room with height adjustability for optimal airflow. Trust me, I'm a huge fan. You can tell them, you can tell AI to be funny. You can tell them to use a brand voice that's humorous. You can, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff. And you can get amazing head starts on things. I know a lot of, you know, every time we do this, the creative, a lot of, all the creative people in the room are like, ooh, I sort of like it. But uh, um, I think you'll see this progress really quickly. And again, this is 24 hours. So if you're like, hey, I didn't like that, I like this, you can just redo it in 10 minutes. It's fun. Okay. We did it, we scoured the world and found influencers. So a lot of times with influencers are looking for complimentary products. So we just did it. So the, you know, AI identified the blade made ceiling fan as a, or a fan cleaner as a complimentary product then scoured all of the influencers that are talking about this complimentary product, because they might be willing to talk about the Hunter fan. They're already talking about this product, so maybe we could engage them. Oh, sorry, did I? Um, okay, so this is shared audience non-competing. So AI believes that Sonos has a shared audience with, with, uh, with Hunter fan, and that they're non-competing. And here's some of their influencers. So they might be able to mention a Hunter fan at the same time. And then direct competitors. I think we talked about this one earlier, the Warmy. Um, and then here's the people talking about Warmy, if you want to really go a little bit conquesting nuclear on uh, your competitors. Go see if you can chase them down. Okay, this is fascinating content. So what we do is we essentially we say, okay, across the category, what's out there that's generating the most likes, comments, shares, the most engaged content? And it was this, you know, across the category, it was this, you know, this picture. Now it doesn't have a fan in it, but it's just the category, right? Which would be like home and what is what is the category? Home tools and home improvement. So that picture, and so AI took that picture on the left and reimagined it on the right. It's pretty good. And now you have no copyright stuff. You didn't need to rent the house. You didn't need to do anything. You basically just picked, hey, this is working really well. Let's tokenize that content, build all the descriptions, and rebuild it with AI. And that's what you, that's what you have on the right. And it did the same. I don't know what this turtle is, but it's the number one you know, solar green turtle is the number one in the category, tools and home improvement, with a bestseller ranking of number one. And so it took that and reimagined it for including a fan. It looks like it's like, because of course we're trying to just pitch the fan, but it's like, okay, what, what are they doing? And how do we incorporate a fan into that thing? And there you go. You guys could try that. You know, I don't know if it'll work. But uh, it's a very interesting start and takes no time at all. And then, of course, if you go through all the reviews, if you can get all the D to C data, then you can identify, OK, so based on first and last name, so this is Carl Barron. There's a 60.46% chance that Carl is 62. 97% chance male, and you sort of go through ethnicity. 
Um, so this is just one person who happened to leave a review that was out online somewhere. Now, if you have all your D2C data, and you can also put in you know, uh, some demographic information, maybe address, you can get very close on socioeconomic status, bachelor's degree or no, all of those things, and you can co then you can feed all of that data into your overall strategy as well. Th taking this amount of data and feeding it into a strategy is impossible as a human. This will have to be done with AI. Oh, I guess it's re highlighting stuff out of the reviews too. Um, I forgot to mention that, this is another one. Um, so it'll break down the reviews and say, and it can break down you know, seven million reviews and basically say, hey, by the way, here's all the highlights, here's the stuff you guys need to be paying attention to. Because otherwise you're paying somebody like, hey, what's, what's popped up in the reviews lately? You know, anything, any trends you're seeing? Well, AI will just basically say, yeah, here they are. Here's all the trends. Okay, we're gonna try the 20 minute now, one now. How long do we have? Oh, we have no time really. What? Okay, let's hit the 20 minute one, we'll go fast. Forget the fact sheet, forget this, you guys got that. Everyone knows about the prompt. Okay, here's PB Fit. Cool, cookies, I didn't even know what it was. German, I'm sure they messed with something and they want to do something fun here, but what else we got? Mandarin. Spanish. Wait, oh yeah, okay, I'm glad we got the Eiffel Towers in. <laughs> On the French. You can imagine how much fun they're having in the war room. There's like 10 people and they just, they're all creating parts of the slides, and so they, they, you know, they like to play with some of the AI things. Um, this is pretty good. You know, just content. Here's our video. Meet PB Fit All Natural Peanut Butter Powder. 87% less fat, one third fewer calories than regular peanut butter, yet brimming with roasted peanut flavor. A powerful protein punch of 8G per serving. Perfect post-workout or in your morning smoothie. Crafted with three simple ingredients you can trust. Peanuts, coconut palm sugar, and salt. Natural, gluten-free, and simply delicious. Redefine your peanut butter experience with PB Fit. Better body foods, flavor, and health in harmony. I, I would advise getting a new AI avatar if there's someone at your company who has a little more pizzazz in the selling thing, do that. But uh, pretty impressive that you know you can do that. In, you know you can create this in 20 minutes. So um, so this is complimentary. In this case, they did do the you know the social piece. So Fitbit watches they would consider complimentary. Here's some you know influencers. Halo Top ice cream would be your shared audience non-competing. Keep going. Orgain protein powder would be a direct competitor. Would you guys consider Orgain? Who who said P fit anyway? Is that true? At least from an AI perspective, it's interesting, right? So then you're like, huh, I wonder why. So then you can break down into why. Um, okay, so here's just the content. So it basically said, okay, across the category, here's some that was very engaging content, and they reimagined it. I sort of think, maybe I'm, I don't get design as well as the designers, but I sort of like it better. You know, that's AI generated, AI, you know, reimagined. And then on the bottom left, it looks like that's the number one best-selling product in the gourmet grocery and food category. And now we have two models, and, and they're free. <laughs> you don't have to pay them. Um, OK. So then, of course, we pulled down reviews. We answered the reviews. You guys can read these. You know, how many calories? The answer is 30 per serving. And then you know, just you, you can just see what AI can do at at a at a speed that is somewhat mind blowing. Grab the reviews, break down the age probability. Okay, this is interesting. Sonia, this is one of the lowest age probabilities I've seen. Is forty three percent. Okay, everyone, thank you. <laughs>